Hey there, and welcome to Radio Free Bay Ridge, your hyper-local progressive podcast focusing exclusively on beautiful Bay Ridge, Brooklyn. I am your host, Dan. I'm also joined with Mary. And we are in a brand new gallery space that's reopening very soon. And we're joined with some of the co-founders of what is Underland Gallery. We're joined with Hannah Salyer and Maxim Elrod. Guys, thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having us, Dan and Mary. We're real excited to talk about the space right here in Bay Ridge. Yeah, I'm so grateful you guys reached out. As Dan mentioned, we're kind of dusting off the books and we have a show coming up that I'm really excited about. And I'm super excited to talk to you both. So let's set the scene here a little bit for our listeners. We are in a beautiful brownstone, your typical Brooklyn Bay Ridge brownstone. And can I just say, this is a gorgeous space. I love it here. This open space, the hardwood floors, the parquet, the like half wallpaper. You've even got a tin ceiling, which is one of my favorite architectural elements. I can't say enough about this space. (laughs) Oh, well, we love it a lot. It's not lost on us how beautiful it is. And really, we're lucky we didn't do a ton to the space. Well, we live over it. I should say we didn't (laughs) find it randomly. Um, There's a lawyer here once she moved out. It really needed a lot of TLC, but beyond that, we recognized how special the space was. As much as it pains me to uh, say nice things about a landlord, (laughs) our our landlords are really great people. They are very much artists themselves, and they understood kind of what we were looking to do. And so they kind of helped us out. They helped with some of the renovations, which was huge. They're great people. We owe a lot to their interest in this. And their generosity, in a sense. Yes, absolutely. There was a New York Times article that came out a little while ago, um, link in the show notes, that was talking about how some reporters were going into all these weird, unique spaces like bookstores and art spaces in the city. And they were asking people, how do you keep this space going? And almost to a T, every single one of them was like, we have a unique relationship with a very weird landlord. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. yeah, I knew this was going to be a good story when you said our landlords are really great people and not <laughs> corporations. <laughs> if you guys didn't come here to start a gallery, can you tell us a little bit about yourselves and how that happens? Well, I am actually a transplant, as are many people these days. Welcome. Um, <laughs> I'm, I've been here for coming up on 10 years now, but I came here for school. I went to Pratt Institute, which Dan, I know you <laughs> yes, are. Yes, also an alum. Yes. Um, Lots of cannoneer pride in the room. <laughs> oh, gosh. I can't believe you remembered the name. I think they changed it. They might have changed it from cannoneers to like the cats because there's so yes. many wild cats on campus. The Pratt cats, which actually the administration was trying to remove for exactly, a while. Exactly. The old guy that ran the steam plant. Dan, no one on Dan, the show hyper, knows hyper-local, about. But hyperlocal, Dan. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's not too far. <laughs> um, so, yes, I came for Pratt. I studied illustration, and I am an illustrator by trade, which I also feel very lucky to call myself an illustrator. It's not easy for artists these days, but I have been able to make it work. And I write and illustrate children's books, and I teach. I teach at Parsons, I teach undergrad, and I also teach private lessons to kids because I love working with little ones. So my life very much revolves around the arts, both in my own practice and then in these artistic communities. I'm also a member of Gasworks, a ceramic studio up in Greenwood area. They're a really wonderful community. And I feel like that kind of all bleeds into Underland as a space. Yeah, Gasworks, if anybody's familiar with Empty Bowls Bay Ridge, I think Gasworks has donated bowls to Empty Bowls in the past. Yes. And they're just a short train ride north from here. Yeah, And then you... Yeah, I graduated from the College of Worcester in uh, 2015, a small liberal arts school in Ohio. With a philosophy degree in hand, I was sitting on my butt and a friend was like, hey, I'm moving to New York. Do you want to come? I'm like, sure. Yeah, why not? And, That's uh, how I moved to New York too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, far out. I decided, well, you know, there's too much money in the philosophy racket, so I'm going to try and be a, a musician in New York City. <laughs> And it actually kind of worked out for me. And I did the solo musician gigging thing for a while, playing in bands. um, And eventually that sort of transitioned into doing more recording work. A lot of recording engineers, they fall into it, right? They get like a practice space with some friends. They start dabbling and recording. They get really into it because they're obsessive like me. Then it becomes like what they do full time. And so I've pivoted to that. I met Hannah because I was working at a music venue and the ownership, this band, Elysian Fields, her cousin is the lead. 
vocalist. And she uh, saw that I was, you know, doing sound and bartending and she had this beautiful cousin and played a little matchmaker. And uh, that's how I ended up with this wonderful person that I've been carving out a life with ever since. And I'm just basically trying to hold on for dear life because Hannah is, uh, is, <laughs> oh, no. is quite the force. <laughs> no. I'm glad you brought up the owl because I feel like the owl music parlor, that's how we met. And that is a community art space centered around music that I feel like really inspired our vision for this space. Absolutely. What brought you guys to Bay Ridge? Desperation, <laughs> uh, if I'm being honest. Um, we always liked Bay Ridge. It's just we suffered under the illusion that it was a little too far out, which I think is a very common perception that people have of mm -hmm. Bay Ridge. But we were looking for an apartment and we just were striking out and we saw this listing in Bay Ridge and the pictures looked like something out of a horror movie. I mean, they were so poorly taken. The right? house looked haunted. It looked haunted. Whoever the broker was, I mean, it's they, just like, why choose those photos? They had done like flash pictures and there's like orbs floating and <laughs> oh. the room looks really dull. And we had so many misses with places we had scheduled to see that were like, there's nothing right. to lose by coming down here to see this potentially haunted house. But yeah, we showed up to this place and it was like night and day. I mean, you get let in and we're hit with this incredible smell. The landlords run a restaurant actually uh, in South Slope called Corzo. Incredible chefs and whatever they were cooking, I mean, it was just like the most inviting smell you could imagine. The house was well lit. It was beautiful. All the molding was intact. The floors were immaculate, you know, these beautiful parquet floors. All the old, really intricate wood moldings were intact and like restored. I think we audibly gasped. The landlords immediately exuded this incredible kindness and generosity of spirit. And we clicked right away. We knew this was the place that we wanted to spend a long haul in and become part of this community that we just have gotten nothing but joy and support from. And the Corzo chefs up on Third Avenue, they briefly had an outpost of Corzo in Bay Ridge called Berlin Beat Company. Oh, so R.I.P. That place was so yes. good. Yes, mm -hmm. You guys were upstairs. So down here was a lawyer's office. And people in Bay Ridge instantly know when you go down through Brownstone Belt Bay Ridge, it's like lawyer, doctor, lawyer, doctor, lawyer, lawyer, doctor, doctor, doctor. But now there's one that's gallery. How did that happen? How did that not just turn into another lawyer situation? When the lawyer moved out, we uh, expressed interest to the landlord saying we would be down to take over this space and do something a little different with it. You know, the landlord kind of thought about it for a moment. They're like, well, you know, it's nice to know that we don't have to be on call for a lawyer every time a light bulb needs to be changed. You guys have been good about taking care of the space upstairs, so we can work something out. They were just like so into it. They acted like they had reservations, but I could tell they were really stoked about it. <laughs> and then as we were walking through the space, I was like, yeah, so what's the deal with the cellar? Is there storage down there? Is it equally haunted? <laughs> Is it haunted? Um, and our landlord was like, yeah, I'll bring you down there. I'll bring you down there. So he walks us down these stairs into this finished basement with a recording studio. <laughs> Um, and Max's head, I think, exploded. My jaw was on, on the floor, for sure. And he's like, oh, yeah, this is where I recorded my full-length album. Uh, you know, I think you've heard it. I had heard it. It's pretty good, actually. Uh, check out Otto Zizak's music. But it just was like, okay, this is like a perfect storm of coincidences and serendipity. And it felt like it was meant to be. So how did Underland get started? You've also mentioned you have a third member. And uh, that's Esther Kwan a very good friend of both of us and actually neighbor. She lives across the street. So it's very convenient in that <laughs> regard. I met her through our ceramic studio, through Gasworks. She's a really talented ceramicist and art teacher. And she has a background actually in the arts nonprofit world, which is a really great background to have when you're venturing into the territory that we have crossed into. Esther and I tend to focus on the visual arts component. So far, we've only had two shows and <laughs> with a couple more coming up, but she is like my design guru. I really value her sensibilities when it comes to graphic design and also just gallery layout. I feel like we make a really great team. She has a bottomless knowledge about curation and art exhibits and the history of art in general. And she's always surprising me with her capacity to take on these shows. 
I think it's important to emphasize just how essential Esther Kwan is to this operation. I mean, sometimes it feels like there's 2.5 people running the show and, you know, I'm the 0.5. <laughs> um, oh I know H- Hannah probably would say that's not <laughs> that's, the case. That's but, certainly not true. Um, but if Hannah is Duke Ellington, then, you know, Esther Kwan is Billy Strayhorn. I mean, like she's like the other half of her heartbeat. Mm. I always feel like artists don't get enough credit for being entrepreneurs. You are an entrepreneur. Like nobody has more hustle than an artist, except maybe a musician. Uh, so curation is such a creative act. So how's it been like for you as a visual artist to like sort of step behind that curtain? It's been an interesting experience because for me personally, I haven't stepped into that role before. It's a very different experience. You're very much outside yourself. You're not focused on your own practice. You're focused on a visual language, making sure things are cohesive. You're thinking about how someone's going to move through a space. I've enjoyed it. It's a challenge. Forming Underland, we didn't have this like, oh yes, we're going to have shows about a certain type of subject matter. But it's actually shaken out that almost all of them have had to do with death. Um, And the the next show is no different, actually. (laughs) Of course, the concept of Underland, this name Underland, I cannot, by the way, I'm just going to divert for a second. I cannot take credit for the actual word Underland. I was working on one of my picture books about cave art and early human art, and I picked up this really immersive book by Robert McFarlane, Underland, A Deep Time Journey. It's one of my favorites. Underland, like as in the sub layers of the earth, both geologically, geographically, how it exists in mythology, really how we relate to it as humans. And I was just so captured by that idea. I can't recommend the book enough. He's visiting all of these different sites, you know, an underground river, he's spelunking in different caves, he's visiting the catacombs in France, he's visiting cave art, he's visiting a glacier underground salt labs. So it felt like the perfect connection and the perfect name for the space that was kind of, part of it is actually underground and it's under this beautiful place where we were living (laughs) and it kind of just took us by surprise. So that's what is contained in the name. We assumed occupancy in March of 2021. God, it's been that long. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I know. It's, oh, goodness. That summer is really when we were painting, and they so kindly redid the floors. And then you guys had your opening show on Halloween, right? Technically, the <laughs> first show in the space was in late September. That was an artist, Linnea Reich. She had a book launch, and she also displayed some of the art that was in her book. She had the original pieces, and Linnea's show felt like a soft opening. That was about 40 to 50 people. It went really well. People were really impressed with the space. Then we organized this big group show, Death Mask, which we were calling the inaugural, because that's when we, I think a couple hundred people came through here. Yeah. Not all at once, but throughout the night. That was more of a party, a joyous (laughs) Halloween bash, if you will. It's not just a gallery space, but it's also a performing area. Precisely. And this summer, we're actually hoping in between the shows to have performances by musicians and potentially poets. So keep an eye out for that. Nice. um, There's a lot of artists in Bay Ridge, but there are also a huge, huge amount of musicians scattered throughout all the back alleys. <laughs> it's uh, amazing when you'll find someone's half-built studio yeah. like in someone's house. You guys are making it sound like an infestation. <laughs> it, it's, it is an infestation, <laughs> truly. Um, but yeah, even uh, recently, we had a dinner with our neighbors from down the street, and I found out that this fellow Joseph Anastasi has a studio, and he's been doing music his whole life, and is like super involved with all the Arts Foundation, including his wife, Audrey, too. I mean, she's involved with Brooklyn Waterfront Artists Coalition, which is the collection of artists that are literally underneath the studio where I work in Red Hook. These connections are just so serendipitous. I know we've said and that. And she's a on the times. board of the Brooklyn Artists Commission. Yes. I'm probably watching that. But I know that she's heavily involved in many community spaces and arts organizations. They actually have their own gallery and gathering space, if you will, in Sunset Park. 
Audrey and Joseph have been really lovely and helpful and kind of giving us advice and expert tips. The serendipity really is interesting because also you mentioned Red Hook and I know that John Avaludo, formerly of the Owl's Head, which used to hold similar events, he ended up landing just a peer away from you guys yep. over at yep. Red Hook Winery. All of these different things in the space and this collaboration of multiple people, it really is like a weird chimera of a gallery, which also I just had to ask, where does the logo come from? Which is <laughs> beautiful. I always in my head refer to it as a hippocatus. <laughs> Um, I love that. Oh my oh. gosh, that's that's we're, we're gonna use that. All <laughs> of the cred. I hired a very dear friend of mine who's an incredibly talented graphic designer and illustrator. He goes by Ricardo Desenio. He is down in Galveston with another close friend of mine, his partner Lindsay McAlevey. She's a filmmaker and photographer. Ricardo designed this magnificent logo and the typeface. All I gave to him, I was like. I want some like Edward Gorey influence. I want something that's dark and mystical and also begs a question. Like someone's going to see that and be like, whoa, what is that? I want to know, you know, what that is. Um, it so 100% worked. You were on 77th Street. You are right next to the 77th Street subway stop. And any time that the sign is out for Underland on this old gas lamp light, it's a half cat, half sea serpent dish pawing in like black and white Edward Gorey style exactly. And you're like, what is that? There's a huge tree next to the building too. And it's in shade, unlike much of the rest of the block, which is really bright. It's like this shaded, mysterious thing. It intrigued us immediately the second we saw it. Yeah, I'd say they really delivered on that artist brief. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good to know. Yeah, Ricardo is great. He just ran with it and he really hit the nail on the head. So let's go really quickly into also what is next for the gallery, because we're sitting right now in, you know, the space as it's transitioning into the next opening, which is on July 22nd, right? Yes, the opening is July 22nd. There's going to be an artist talk the day after. The show is called um, Kindred Spirits Honoring Animals in Death. So the, it's interesting because the two participating artists chose that name nodding to our first two shows. Our very mm -hmm. first show was called Kindling, and our second show is Death Mask, and they wanted to tie in. I didn't suggest that to them. That was of their own accord. So I thought that was really interesting that it's kind of in conversation with our last two shows, both in subject matter and in name. But this show is going to hone in on the work of two artists, one being Amanda Stronza, who is a anthropologist, a conservationist, and a very, very talented wildlife photographer. She keeps saying, you know, I'm not an artist. I'm not an artist. I'm like, Amanda, you need to just, you can't say that anymore. You are so talented. You have so much work to show. You, are... you have a gallery opening now. Yes. You can't say you're not an artist. <laughs> yeah, she, she's very much an artist at heart. And she's worked extensively in Botswana and in the Amazon and Peru, Colombia, working with communities to both promote and help conservation efforts, focusing on this kind of union between humans and the bigger ecosystem which that alone is amazing. But what she calls her passion is creating these animal memorials. So she lives in Texas, in Austin, and she creates these really exquisite memorials for um, dead animals she finds on the road, pushing back against this notion of roadkill, of lives that are discarded, viewed as mm. trash or waste. She really likes to take the time to notice these really exquisite creatures. A lot of people, when I'm first talking about this, they think, oh gosh, am I going to be seeing like these gory photos of these dead animals? That's not at all yeah, what's happening. They're beautiful. They're, yes, they're really exquisite. She puts so much care into these memorials. She's collecting wildflowers and arranging them in such a way, you know, she really spends her time to honor the lives of these creatures and you get to see them in all their beauty. A lot of them just look like they've fallen asleep. And then also joined in the show is going to be Rachel Ivani. She has a background in scientific illustration. 
she has this amazing skill set for illustrating fur and feather, and she's really a master at that. And so she's creating pieces that kind of are in conversation with Amanda's memorials. They want to highlight the fact that these creatures were autonomous, sentient beings who lived lives. So they will have their work. And then we're also going to have floral installations by a good friend of mine who's also a florist and a very talented ceramicist. She goes by Moo. We're going to have this kind of interactive shrine that people can add to. We've talked a lot about the floral element in that we only have about two to three days and then these flowers are going to wither. Dried flowers are very expensive. Do we want to do silk? And so we arrived at this idea that we would arrange the fresh live plants in the shrine in such a way that we would be prepared for them to wither and that would be part of the oh, wow. installation. It's going to be a really fascinating show honoring these cycles of life and death. Amanda can talk more about this, and she will undoubtedly in her artist talk, but she has a very big online community she's created around these memorials, and people actually send her their own memorials for animals that they find. But there's also a sliver of people who are like, ew, why are you showing these dead animals? You should be burying them. People get very iffy when we confront death. Well, this culture doesn't provide a lot of opportunities for people to engage with cycles and death. Yeah. Exactly. And, and that's a big part of this show, acknowledging that there can be beauty in death and these cycles that we can witness and we don't have to throw in the garbage or sweep under the rug. We do view animals mostly because of their instrumental value in such a way that it serves our purposes or it makes money. We see them as objects. And the whole point of this show is to honor not only the cycles of life and decomposition, but recognizing that all creatures have a robust internal life that can be taken away. And so do you have any other plans for what's after Kindred Spirits? Good question. We actually are bringing back the Death Mask group show. It was such a hit. Last year it went so well. The dynamic of the group show and that subject matter was just so fantastic that people were actually asking about it and there was kind of no question. Esther and I were like, we need to make this an annual group show. So it will be coming back around Halloween time. Get your costumes ready. Oh, yeah. In the conception of Underland, I think we were really adamant about creating a space that was not only a visual art gallery. It's not a fine art gallery. It's really an intimate community art space. So that encompasses many things, right? That encompasses visual arts shows, performances, readings gatherings. Um, you are an art educator as well. So, I mean, there is an element of we do want to have classes. And in the months leading up to our opening, I was really adamant about contacting members of the community. I felt like a sleuth. I was at a blood drive and I was telling someone about forming this gallery and they're like, oh, you need to talk to Victoria Hoffmo. And so I, yeah. I reached out to Victoria Hoffmo and Victoria Hoffmo is a powerhouse. Oh my gosh, I don't know if you are yeah, familiar. Yeah, she's so classic Bay Ridge. Yeah. Yes, she yeah. born and bred. She was like, well, you need to get in touch with Janine Bardot, who runs Stand 4. And I should say Janine has been absolutely wonderful. She's been so lovely. And we kind of consider ourselves sister galleries because we're just a block away from each other. Yeah. So <laughs> it's um, very convenient. <laughs> yes. We keep circling back to the serendipitous circumstances upon which this gallery came to be. but. Every time that we've reached out to the Bay Ridge community, we've just gotten like double back in the support. <laughs> I mean, it's really incredible. And we are just so grateful. No, thank you for having this awesome space and doing this work. It's hard. It's tough work to like, you know, As really, well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> if anybody listening out there wants to get in touch with you, contact you, follow you or come visit, how do they do those things? We've got a telegraph. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, just kidding. Just underlandgallery.com. Our email is info at underlandgallery.com. And our Instagram, I have to plug the social media. It's just Underland Gallery. And with the cat, sea serpent creature, you'll, you'll see that. I'll know you're in the right place yeah. when you see that. <laughs> 
Awesome. And so July 22nd is the next exhibition opening coming up. That's a Friday. And then the Saturday after we'll have an artist talk. Thank you guys for inviting us into your gallery. Thank you so much for creating this gallery space with Esther. Thank you so, oh, thank you so, thank you so much. much for being here. Yeah. Thanks, Dan and Mary. So everyone, come check out Underland July 22nd. And if you're listening to this after that, just go to underlandgallery.com. Check out what's here now. Check out our show notes. Check out Radio Free Bay Ridge at radiofreebayridge.org. For show notes and more, check us out on Twitter at Radio Free BR. And until next time, everyone, stay, stay free, free Bay Ridge. Ridge.